Okay, guys, the moment of truth. Talk to me. What's going on, guys, and welcome to our review of Talk to Me, a film that I've been meaning to get to here for a while. Just things just kept on piling up and coming up and just getting in the way so now I finally be able to talk about this I finally went and seen it and talk about it as usual thank you so much for clicking here I really do appreciate it so talk to me tells the story of a group of friends who has this porcelain hand of this once dead psychic to where if you touch it you get to communicate with the dead so it's basically a possession movie a ghost possession movie so as I said I finally got around to seeing this after weeks of waiting and I apologize for that <laughs> and after reading up on this it was done by a couple of youtubers it was directed by a couple of youtubers up from Australia actually and I gotta say for their directional debut it wasn't all that bad knowing that this movie was done by a couple of youtubers and it's just trying to start and get on out there it's pretty refreshing it's pretty inspiring I've seen a couple of their videos I had to brush up on these on these guys contents it's actually a couple of brothers and they mostly do like like sort of from what I could tell like comedy skits but in a very graphic way the name of the YouTube channel is Raka Raka I'll leave the link down below for you to check them out but as far as the movie talk to me I think they did a really good job and start off with the positives I gotta say I did like the story and it was one of those that I wasn't really quite expecting to like as much as I did I've said it many many times before that I'm pretty much burnt out on demon possession or any possession type films unless it's Evil Dead I mean Evil Dead is pretty much the glue for me but when it came to talk to me as the movie you know as I got into the second act it was actually quite intriguing. It was one of those that actually kept me on my feet and actually, you know, just kept me interested. And that really happens. Now, this might change for me in a couple of days or if I watch it again, because I, yes, I do actually see myself watching this one again. But it was actually quite uh, fascinating. It was actually quite good. It's just about these friends that has this porcelain hand from what I could tell was actually like molded but underneath is an actual dead hand and if you sh handshake it you get to uh, communicate with the dead and you know just plain and simple and it, it may seem like a concept that's been dug into the ground that's been dragged to just the tip but the way this movie played out was actually pretty interesting and again as I said for a couple of youtubers starting off and this being their directional debut it was actually quite intriguing. I gotta mention the main star, and most of these actors I never really heard of, except for one which was Miranda Otto, who was actually in the Lord of the Rings franchise, of all things. She played the mother of one of the characters, and she I thought she did a really good job. I thought she showed real depth and emotion, and I thought she brought a pretty cool performance. Yeah, you know, she wasn't in it much, but when she was on screen, she definitely had her moments. She's just another one of those actors that I don't really know of. The only other thing I've seen her in was those Lord of the Ring movies in the early 2000s. But when she showed up, I thought she did a really good job. And I gotta mention the main character, Mia, played by Sophie Wilde. I thought she shined. I thought she shined really good. Especially in the scenes where she was possessed. Uh, it wasn't much, but when she did, she gave it her all. And she shined really good. I like what they brought to her character. I thought she had a pretty interesting backstory of something really tragic. I won't mention what happened to her in the past. And that kind of really brought up, uh, brought out a really great, interesting character arc. And I've said this many times before. It like just depends on how well it's executed. And she actually executed it really good. And it's just the way that they brought this character out was pretty interesting. And it was a one of those characters, especially in a horror movie like this, that you're really interested in, that you really want in your film to... You know, keep the audience intrigued. And me as an audience member I was actually intrigued by this girl. 
I just, I really did like the way that what she uh, brought to her performance. She was definitely one of the standout characters. Now, again, I've never seen this girl before this movie. She may have been in other things. When I look her up on Wikipedia, her name is highlighted blue, so apparently she has done some stuff, but none that I've seen. Again, and talk to me, she was really good. She was really, um, you know, interesting. Just one of those interesting characters that I really enjoyed following. This is an A24 release. I've had sort of a rocky relationship with them. I don't watch much of their movies, but the ones that I have watched in the past, I, I just thought was really weird. I mean, not bad, not horrible, not crappy, but it's just one of those weird companies that just throws out weird movies. I mean, they've got their own style. I mean, when you're in the business, this is somebody who's not in the business. This is coming from somebody who's not in the business. But, I mean, doing my research and just looking at all these different filmmakers and companies, they've got their own style. A24 definitely has their own. I did like X. Pearl was good. Everything Everywhere All at Once was really good. But A24 has got their certain style that's kind of a hit and miss with me. But when it misses, it doesn't miss that much. It's one of those companies that it's just... It's interesting, you know, just the stuff that they bring out. But with Talk To Me, unlike those other films, it didn't really feel that way. It felt more straightforward. It felt more in-depth. It didn't feel weird. It was just this basic ghost haunting story of a bunch of ghosts that once you touch this hand, that like where this hand is the center of it, once you touch this arm slash hand, you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> And again, I know that's a concept that seemed like it's been drugged into the ground. But again, and talk to me, it wasn't bad. It actually wasn't bad at all. In many ways, it surprised me. It really did shock me because I really didn't expect to like this as much as I did. So yes, the rewatch value, a little higher up than the last couple of movies I reviewed. <laughs> and that's not because of the genre that those other movies was. No, but it, it, this movie is really more my speed. I gotta say, some of the jump scares, and this is something else, just like with comedy, I can't really say that much nowadays in horror movies, but it, there was quite a few, and I thought they executed them pretty well. There was plenty of times where I jumped out of my seat just about, and it just kind of, like I said in the beginning of this review, it kept me on my toes, and it was one of those that actually did its job right. Again, for beginner filmmakers, for YouTubers that's trying to get out there, I praise them. I, I really do. Hey, good job, y'all. I know y'all aren't watching this video, but I just feel like I still got to say it anyway. <laughs> A lot of horror movies, especially ghost possession and demon possession movies, uh, it just doesn't do it for me. But this one, it kind of did. Just a little bit. Not massively, but just a little bit. I'm always going to stick by what I said before in the past, about, especially about Evil Dead. That's going to be the top dog with me. But talk to me, let's just say it came maybe 60-40, closer to that, to Evil Dead. But not quite there. So as I dive into my negatives, I really think that this movie was a little bit overhyped. Now I know in the business, especially when you're advertising your own film, you've got to do this. And you've got to send out positive words, and sometimes that might seem a little bit over-exaggerating. I just felt like that this was a little bit overhyped, a little bit over-exaggerated. All you hear, all you heard leading up to this movie's release, or at least I remember hearing, that it was the most scariest movie around. There's not been one like this. No, not really. There's been kind of, you know, no offense, but there's been kind of better films out there <laughs> compared to this, compared to Talk To Me. Now again, let me just clarify car that this one did hit closer to home. It wasn't the worst I've seen. It wasn't one of those demon possessions or ghost possession movies that I could easily turn away from because I did enjoy myself. But it just, the overhype might want to like, tone it down just a little bit. It's got its frightening moments but it's not 
It's not nowhere what they were saying, what they kept on advertising, to me anyway. But in the end, guys, the film was actually, again, a surprise. I rolled out pretty satisfied. I rolled out pretty shocked. And just the level of, you know, how much I actually like this differ from a lot of the other Ghost and Demon Possessions movies that I've watched. It's actually worth it. It's actually one of those horror films that is actually... That actually seemed like it was trying. That actually seemed like it was going for it. You know, just going for broke. The film definitely had its entertaining moments. I enjoyed it for sure. And should be put on a pedestal. So, talk to me. What was your thoughts on it? Were you a fan of this film? Did you like the way the, you know, the execution style and just the all out scare factor? Did you think it was the, the scariest movie around, like what they kept on saying? Or did you see better? Leave me a comment down below and give me your thoughts. Thank you so much as always guys for clicking here. I really do appreciate it. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And make sure to click that bell icon and set it on the all function so you don't miss a thing. I do plan on reviewing The Last Voyage of the Demeter, which I've already got my ticket for that, so stay tuned for that. That should be my next one. And Make 2, The Trench, starring Jason Statham. Stay tuned for those, and I will see you then. Peace.